Hey there, Nate. Hey. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Great to be here. So we're today here at Future of Fintech talking about something that for, you know, traditionally is so old school in the real estate transaction, which is title and closing. So, but there's a lot of changes going on right now. So why we have, we have new players getting into the space. We have people like yourself uh, really providing technology for it. Why now? What, what is going on in title that makes this, why is it getting so much attention right now? It's a good question. I'm, I mean, the, the first thing to think about is, you know, for those of you who bought a house before, it's a terrible process. You know, it's still, despite, you know, decades of investing in tech and software and, you know, all sorts of new business models, buying a house, it's still brutal experience. You know, it's in many different parts of the transaction is completely broken. You know, I think the thing that we realized, which was a bit unique, is that the title company is actually this forgotten central piece at the middle of the transaction. So if you're thinking about a real estate agent, you know, the real estate agent misses about a third of transactions because they, they don't see the for sale by owner and they don't see the refinances. And on the lender side, they miss all the cash deals. It's 15% of transactions. And so the title company has just been this kind of forgotten central node in the real estate transaction for decades. And you know, if, you look, if you look back you know, at the last 20 years of investing in real estate tech, it's all tech-enabled brokerages. It's you know, more easy to apply to mortgage companies. But the title company just systematically forgotten. So what we did and you know, what we're still doing is we saw the title company as a way, you know, an entry point to digitize the entire real estate transaction. And so the challenge in title is that you have huge companies, you know, customers and partners of ours like Fidelity and First American, Old Republic, Stewart, but you also have the, the mom and pop title companies, you know, the, the local law office down the street. Um, and then you have a whole slew of tech-enabled players. You know, a lot of our customers like Redfin or Realtor.com or, you know, State's Title, who are trying to actually revolutionize the process. But if you're able to reinvent the technology for the title company, the thing we realized is you can actually become the infrastructure for digitizing the entire transaction and unlock through the title company workflows for the lender, for the real estate agent, and ultimately change the consumer experience in a pretty meaningful way. So that's, that's really the opportunity we saw with the title company and why we positioned how we did. Really interesting. I haven't heard anyone else who's, who's come at the automation or digitization from, from, from title coming through the back door, sort of. Totally. Interesting. Well, part, one of the things that we see um, is a lot of new players. You mentioned kind of the, the old guard players that have been around forever, and then there's lots of mom and pops, but we see a lot of real new entrants. You know, we have a, a, a low margin right now in, in, real, in the mortgage space as far as like, you know, people aren't making as much money. There's lots of margin compression. So one of the things we see is VC-backed businesses buying title, which is so new. So I, I would love to ask you about that. What are some recent examples and what do you think they see as the opportunity? Right. It's a great question. You know, if you think about, you know, if you want to compete in the brokerage business today or you want to compete in the lending business, the mortgage business today, it's ultra competitive. And these companies are out there, think of the ads you see on TV for Quicken Loans. You know, they're spending so much money to acquire customers. And so if you want to be competitive, you have to do two things. One, you're trying ultimately to sell a consumer experience you know, as a bro tech-enabled brokerage or a tech-enabled lender. And so it usually breaks down in title and so this is what a lot of these customers have run into, is they'll start this brokerage, they'll go to the consumer and they'll be like, hey, look, we're gonna have the smoothest, best home buying experience you've ever had. They go through the beginning of the process, they get to a signed purchase agreement, it's all good, and then it goes over to the title company and, and it's a mess. Or it's not the digital experience that they had promised to their consumer. And so I think you see a lot of these you know, names that you're familiar with on the you know, tech enabled brokerage and lender side, choosing to start a title company, you know, most of them use our software so that they can white label it and provide it as part of their 
kind of checkout flow, uh, you know, for like a Redfin or someone like that. And the second thing that they're after beyond just the consumer experience is obviously the, the economics. You know, the title companies or the, the brokerages and the lenders are competing like crazy for those leads. And so if they're spending a huge amount on customer acquisition, they're thinking about what else can they layer in as part of their kind of bundle deal and title and mortgage ends up being the things they add. So if you, if you look at all of the players that have entered over the last five years on the brokerage side, usually they've then started a, a lender and a title company. If you look at the people who started on the lending side, they started a broker and then a title company. And so it's kind of a really well-worn path at this point. And all the big names that you might think about in the real estate industry are doing that. Um, and then all the new players are, are, are doing it as well. Now, what happens though, in, in mortgage, it's a very cyclical business. It's very dependent on mortgage rates. We all know that at some point mortgage rates are gonna go up. So you have a lot of people getting in. Um, what happens when we get back to, you know, last, last year, huge volumes. This year, still pretty good volume. Even though we're going back to purchase, what happens as we get back to a more normalized environment? You know, I, I think at the end of the day, the process of buying a house t is, is bad. You know, like I mentioned before, it just, there's a lot to be desired in how does the home transaction work. So I think the fundamental assumption of most of these companies is, hey, we should make the home buying process better. We're trying to enable that for them as their underlying infrastructure, like let them provide that checkout experience. I think that is the right view. And I think that's kind of where things are headed, you know, whether rates are high or low. Obviously, the mix of purchase business and refi business does depend on, you know, where rates are and where they're headed. So I think you'll see kind of ebbs and flow in revenues and, and their volume. Uh, but it's directionally all these companies are, are doing the right thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about how Qualia is approaching this. So, you know, in the, in the mortgage tech space, what, what I see is that most companies are looking at solving discrete problems. And so you get point solutions. But you guys really took a different tack and, you know, you have the platform. So, so tell me why that is a benefit to not only your customers, but, but what advantages does that give you as a tech company coming in? You know, that's, that's I think, one of the most relevant questions in, in the space is you see lots of people trying to provide these very narrow, like, signing solutions or point solutions around solving some part of the real estate transaction. And their end customers might be using the product like five minutes as part of, you know, for five minutes a day as part of, you know, closing a loan. Our philosophy was really be the system of record for the title company, be the thing that the title company spends eight plus hours a day in doing all the work, you know, and so if you've bought a house, that's that inch of paperwork that you get, you know, that comes out of our software. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot you can do to digitize that and we're layering lots of tools in on top, but also think about all the regulatory compliance stuff, the accounting, the escrow funds that the title company has to deal with. And so our view was if you can revolutionize the core, how you deliver the, the back office of the title company and make it web-based, make it truly more efficient, what that enables is providing a dramatically better experience to the lender, to the real estate agent in a way which isn't possible if you're just a, a point in time solution. So I think you know, we're, we're really enabling all these players who are trying to build the, the brokerage platforms and the lending platforms of the future. And you couldn't do that if you're just part of their workflow. Really interesting. So this is a good time to talk, to clear up the confusion that people have when it comes to uh, a title agent and, you know, someone, some of your clients and you, because it does get a little bit, um, you know, blurry there. So say someone like Doma versus Qualia. So Doma, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, is a title insurer and title agent that went public earlier this year. Great business. They're a customer of ours. And they're all about managing the, you know, the actual administrative work of doing a closing. You know, and they, they work on their own you know, internal process. Our view is enable the title companies to do a better job across the board, whether you're the local mom and pop title company or you're 
the large national players, you know, like Fidelity or First American. And so I think a platform, ultimately, you know, what we're trying to do is help the lender, the broker, the buyer, and seller standardize the way in which they're interacting with the title ecosystem. And you can only do that from the position of being a platform that's across the entire industry versus being you know, a constituent player in the industry. And so we focus on just enabling all those customers and getting them plugged in with all the, the national players. So would you say your, your mix of business is mostly those larger companies or how do you really reach the mom and pop? Because I mean, title is fragmented, right? I mean, it's, it's the you know, at county level, it's, it's the people that know people, right? The realtor's best friend, whatever. Yeah, so this is, this is a kind of a meta point on vertical SaaS in particular, which is you know, don't be afraid of having a long tail of customers. You know, it's, we build an inside sales team and we go out and we talk to them. And you know, there's 15 to 20,000 title companies in the country, and you know, we, we build an effort to go out and talk to them you know, directly on the phone or through their partners or through different channels. And I think that's, that's the way to do it, and more companies should be focused on building you know, that, that really repeatable SMB inside sales motion. So we have a, a ton of adoption from you know, the, the local title companies, the regional players, but then it's important to also be able to bring on you know, the, the Domas or the Fidelities or the Stewarts of the world to be able to standardize for the lender or the broker. What, what's your background? What background did you bring to Qualia that um, has allowed you to do some of these things? Yeah, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer. You know, I almost switched to CS, which probably would have been more useful, to be honest. Um, you know, I think what we're trying to do at Qualia, this, I'm, what I'm describing is a lot of different product. You know, we build a ton of stuff. And to do that, you need to build an engineering first, like, obsessive culture. And so that's, that's what we focus on, is just building a place where it's good to work as an engineer, where we can you know, attract and retain the best engineering talent. And so that's, that's really what it's been all about. Interesting, well let's, let's talk about cybersecurity. Okay, um, this year has been incredible <clears throat> as far as ransomware attacks and, and different kind of things. Title has been, it, two, two things, Title has been the back door that a lot of you know, criminals have used to get to larger financial institutions, so it, it, has, it has that. It itself has been under attack. So we had a ransomware attack on Cloudstar in July, and that, that was a, plat a cloud platform that a lot of title, um, title agencies use. They're still down. I, I checked this morning, it says they're in the final stages. So, um, you know, what, as a CEO of a, of a title tech company, what keeps you up at night? Well, I think the, the first thing is, you're right, the real estate industry in general is incredibly attacked. There was a survey that was put out, a study that was put out by Alta, the American Land Title Association recently, that said in one third, you know, one out of three real estate transactions, there is an, uh, there's a phishing attack that is attempting to basically divert the escrow funds, uh, either that are going to the title company or that are coming from the title company one-third of, of transactions, which is ridiculous. Right. So I'd say there's two parts to solving it. The first is having really good technology and trying to bring all the communication that's happening behind two-factor authentication you know, in a common platform, that sort of thing. But I think ultimately the most important thing is training on the title company side, on the real estate agent side, on the lender side, so that people aren't you know, falling for phishing attacks and sending money to the wrong place, which, you know, the same Alta study said, of that one third, 8% ended up having money, you know, having a problem. Um, in some cases, in a lot of cases, they recover it, but it's, it's still, you know, a really big problem. So I think it's gonna be, it's gotta be about best in class technology, bringing everyone into a common platform, but it's about, training people and making the title companies and everyone around them understand the risk. You know, we're, we're seeing more um, regulation on, on all sorts of fronts um, starting this year. And so there has been a lot of more uh, tightening regulation around cybersecurity um, and, and more attention paid to um, companies like yours, right? Not, not yours particularly. I'm just saying like, you know, the, the regulators know this is, this is the back door a lot of people are getting in at. 
What does that look like for qualia as far as regulation? Yeah, I think if you think about regulation in qualia, we really started you know, out of uh, some changes to disclosures that were required in the mortgage transaction. You might be familiar with the closing disclosure. You might have seen the document you know, if you bought a house. That document came out of Dodd-Frank and some changes the CFPB made. And so you know, we've always been about helping our customers be ready for you know, regulatory change. And it is really important. You know, we're, our industry is at the intersection of mortgage, insurance. You know, there's money flowing around. It's, it's complicated. And so I think that having a really good regulatory approach with the customers is you know, enabling them is pretty important. What do you see as, um, when you look to the future, like what do you see as the next innovation for Tidal? So when, when I started talking, the main thing I said was Tidal is forgotten. You know, it's been this forgotten backwater for technology investment for a long time. And I think that if you actually are able to, to change that and, and actually you know, digitize a Tidal company on a really significant scale, it will unlock a lot of things for the lender, for the broker, for the buyer, the seller. So that's where I think this is headed. Just basically, we're starting to provide you know, a, a digital checkout experience to the lenders, to the brokers that work with title companies on Qualia. And so that is the, that's the main focus right now, and I think that's, that's where the industry is headed, because the consumer expectation is changing. You know, if you see those Quicken Loans Super Bowl commercials, it's you know, push button, get mortgage is basically what they're, what they're saying. And I think that is the evolving expectation you know, across the entire industry. It's what everyone's pushing towards. Yeah, for sure. So when you look at the consolidation that's already happened, huge year and year and a half in M&A for title, where do you see that headed next? You know, there's always a bit of an ebb and flow in the title industry. In particular, it's because there's a mix between refinance and purchase. And so as rates kind of do this, the title company dynamics change. The other thing that changes is there are more players now that want to come in and kind of attach title as a brokerage or a lender. I think that trend is going to continue. I think you're going to continue to see a lot of consolidation from those players. But then I think you're also going to see a ton of organic growth in those companies. The, the interesting dynamic about title is that on a purchase transaction, it's usually the real estate agent who's helping the consumer select their title company. And the real estate agent is very local and will remain local you know, un unless there's some significant unanticipated change. But I, I think it's going to be that way for quite some time. So I think that means that you're going to have continued fragmentation among title agents. Uh, because of those local relationships. At the end of the day, real estate is an incredibly local business, and I think it's going to stay that way. You know, you talk about fragmentation, and then you look at consolidation. One of the things that, that leads to fragmentation is just the number of tech options out there. So we talked before about point solutions. And so if you're a title company and you've got all these different point solutions, or if you're a lender who has title as part of it and you have all this, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you create something that means that it's actually going to be adopted at the end? Yeah, you know, I think for the point solutions, what you have to do is work with platforms. And you know, on the lending side, the, you know, the platforms are Ellie Mae or Black Knight. On the title side, it's, it's us. And so we enable a lot of these point solutions you're talking about to, through our marketplace, you know, whether you're a platform for notaries or you're a platform for you know, recording documents with counties, like we give access to the customer base in a way which you know, helps them get distribution really quickly and you know, help, helps them deliver their product a lot better. You know, you guys are, are we could say, the disruptors of Tidal, but really, really you're, you're enabling a lot better, smoother experience. But there are a lot of people getting into this space who really do want to just you know, disrupt the people who are currently there, the, the Tidal agencies themselves, the Tidal agents. What, where do you see that next, that next threat coming from? I think that there's going to be some players that continue to gain a lot of share. You know, if you, if you look at the growth that title companies owned by like a Zillow have had or an Open Door or some of these, some of these more tech-enabled players, you know, there's a lot of public research on this. They've, they've grown like crazy. 
And I think you're gonna continue to see that across the board. But at the end of the day, like I said, the real estate agent is still you know, incredibly important in that selection process. And so long as that remains you know, the case, which I think it will, uh, you're gonna see tons of local title companies. What made you think title? You, you talked about Dodd-Frank, you talked about, I think, I guess it must have been TRID, the changes to, yep. uh, to TRID. You know, looking at the whole thing and everything that you could put your life towards in your work, why did you pick title? I think title is actually pretty interesting. It's, it's a, it felt like we had found some secret knowledge, you know, that the title companies were actually this important. You know, it, it's, when you really dig in and look at it, the title companies, they haven't changed their software in decades. You know, how many industries are there that have been unaffected by technology over the last 30 years? N not very many. And so when we saw it, it was, it was very interesting. The opportunity also to be part of a important you know, consumer event where you know, home buying process is usually one of the most important financial decisions of anyone's life. Buying a house, you know, it's, it seemed like a, some secret knowledge combined with an opportunity to actually solve a big problem uh, that, that was really attractive to us. So you've, you've helped solve the title problem, so what's next? Because as you said, you know, if, if you can automate that, it's your entree into other things, so what does that look like? So we're just, we're just getting warmed up. You know, we're starting in title, but I think title is the key and is gonna be the key for a long time. And you know, I think this is applicable in a lot of your industries as well, is if you can kind of reinvent that central node, it really changes the way that you can enable the peripheral nodes, you know, every, everyone around that customer. And so our focus now is on driving platforms into the partners. So on the lender side, on the title insurer side, on the broker side, and with the consumer. And so we have a lot of new products coming out in all of those areas that kind of have, you know, good uh, interconnection back to the title company. So when you look at the, the whole mortgage ecosystem or the real estate tra transaction, if you want to take it from that side, what is the biggest challenge that you feel like not only is title solving, but you're going to solve next? We really want to be the, you know, make the closing simple and easy. You know, make, make that inch of paperwork go away, make it super streamlined, independent of which lender or, or broker you're working with. And I think that's actually achievable. If, if you look out 10 years, it's very unlikely that someone's gonna come to your house with an inch of paperwork for you to sign and hand you a check. I just don't think that's the way it's gonna happen. And so we're, we're positioned well to you know, make that happen and now we just gotta go execute. So I, I can't leave this session without asking you about the SECURE Act. So, um, you know, one of the biggest things in closing is the whole idea of remote online notarization, which is part of the closing that seemingly is, um, is most antiquated, that you have to have a notary in person, uh, especially the state of California has said they will not, um, you know, will not accept um, a change to their state law. So now there's a, a federal law that's pending. What are, your, what are your thoughts about the SECURE Act that's now in Congress? So what the SECURE Act is, is basically letting you have a remote notary that you can sign with you know, over video conference effectively. I think it's a great consumer experience. I think it's where it's headed and you know, it's, it's, it's gonna happen. It's also a good example of where we're a, a core platform and we can kind of build a product like this, remote online notarization, and you know, we've built our own product here and roll it out to all our customers on top of the platform. Great, well, Nate, thank you so much. Thank you, appreciate it. Appreciate you.